The fundamental new principle that I have identified is that all animals uh, tend to evolve toward a characteristic optimal body size whose length scale is set by that of the landmass or the body of water where they live. So to put that less formally, uh, an animal living on a large landmass will tend to evolve to be large. Uh, an animal living on a small landmass will experience an evolutionary pressure, <laughs> encouraging it to become small. Now that simple uh, uh, mechanism explains a very wide range of observations. To start with, it explains why back in the days of the supercontinent Pangaea, uh, the land was dominated by enormous reptiles and huge insects and so on. Whereas today, with the continents in their present configuration, the largest reptiles and dragonflies uh, are very much smaller now that that single large landmass has separated into several much smaller ones. The same holds true for mammals. Ancient animals like woolly mammoths and giant ground sloths have given way to today's mere elephants and tree sloths, <laughs> which are tiny and cuddly by comparison. <laughs> the same principle accounts for the well-known island effect, or Foster's rule, uh, which observes that animals confined to islands evolve to much smaller body sizes than the mainland forms. So for instance, some of the largest sauropods uh, when confined to islands, evolved into closely related forms, a fraction of the ancestral size. The same is true, again, of mammoths. Uh, of course, this is an animal named for being very large. Uh, well, in many cases, actually, several independent, uh, independently documented examples uh, of islands from California up to the Arctic, uh, mammoth populations confined to these islands evolved to much smaller sizes. Uh, this is true even of humans. Uh, you may remember a lot of media attention a few years ago around the discovery of what the press called The Hobbit. Uh, the discovery of a small, uh, at that time newly discovered, hominin species on Flores Island. Uh, and in all of these cases, uh, and in many other examples that I don't have time to, to cover, uh, these are examples of a population being confined to a small landmass and evolving a small body size as a direct result. The same mechanism explains why marine mammals tend to be larger than land ones, and why, of course, the largest animals ever to live on Earth, you know, not just the largest now, but larger even than the, the greatest sauropods back in the heyday of Pangaea, uh, those largest animals are marine animals. And this is unsurprising when we consider that the oceans account for more than twice as much of the Earth's surface as does the land. Now, this mechanism has important uh, implications for modern human society. Uh, over the last century or so, advances in transportation technology have allowed many cultures to become increasingly interconnected with other parts of the world. And the result of that is an increase in the effective length scale for, uh, of the living environment for humans living in these cultures. The effects of that can be seen most clearly in Americans. Uh, <laughs> Because, of course, it's, it's the United States that's really leading the world uh, in these, this trend of increasing connectivity. The United States is the world's leading importer and one of its largest exporters, with four to six times the commercial activity of other leading nations. And it's also the country in which personal long-distance travel, in particular air travel, has become most commonplace. So here I'm showing uh, just domestic route maps uh, for American Airlines only over the last several decades just to give a sense of this uh, increasing connectivity. So at the same time as these trends of increasing uh, travel and commerce, Americans' body size has increased accordingly. <laughs> and this is not just an effect of the last few years. This goes back more than a century, you know, really to the beginning of this transportation explosion. Now, in contrast to the well-known American case, uh, residents of less developed nations where uh, commerce and travel remain restricted, uh, they live in an environment whose length scale is unchanged, and so they uh, maintain a body size that's more typical of historical humans. You can see that very clearly if you look at a measure as simple as the total length of the road network in different nations, uh, and plot the logarithm of that <laughs> against the adult mass. The overall trend here is very clear. 
And if you perform an analysis of variance on this data set, uh, <laughs> turns out a remarkable amount of this variation in adult body size can be explained just by this one uh, very simple, really crude measure. So this effect will be critical to take into account in planning for a future that may include space travel and extraterrestrial. <laughs> extraterrestrial colonization. As we move from an environment of one length scale to one orders of magnitude larger, it will be crucial to take into account the corresponding increases in human body size that will inevitably result. 